Hello everybody, we're going to go over another test today. This is the spring 2014 test. Uh, if you haven't seen one of these before, in the columns here, if I can find a direct slide reference, I'll do it by unit. So unit 1, slide 19. Which of these molecules is synthesized by all cells? ATP is the universal energy currency. Probably also put, you know, hydrogen or proton. Water might be another one. And remember, glycolysis is unit three, so I'm going to say this a bunch throughout the video. But glycolysis is in the cytosol of all cells. So if you can find the enzyme or the metabolite or the vitamin, such as, oops, NAD or NADH. You know, th th those are potential answers. Myosin, you know, th these things happen in all cells. That You know, the question says synthesized, so it might be these are present in all cells. So be careful in the wording on that. But for many times, uh, glycolysis happens in all cells, and many times that will be the key to answering the, the question. This molecule is always used in phosphorylation reactions. The answer is magnesium. I couldn't find the slide reference to this, but phosphorylation is done by kinases, and kinases require magnesium. Which class of enzymes always catalyzes chemical reactions with large equilibrium constants? So the first thing I think with large equilibrium constants are the irreversible reactions. So we're going to group 3 and 6 together as being the irreversible ones. And so I'm stuck with hydrolases or ligases. So I couldn't find the slide for this, but it's enzyme class 6. Because ATP is involved, you know there's going to be large equilibrium constants. I was surprised he put 3 in there. That's a little extra thing of confusion. Remember, 1 and 2 are grouped together. They can go either way. They may be regulatory. 4 and 5 are always reversible, and they will not be regulatory, so they'll have low equilibrium constants. That's a little Biochem 1 review stuff. We'll see that again coming up soon. Which of these enzymes is activated by binding to a phosphorylated protein? The answer is PI3K. binds to IRS1. The slide is for the insulin signaling pathway. And that's where you'll find the answer to that. <clears throat> if I was going through these other ones, adenylate cyclase is activated by a G protein. PKC is two calciums and two DAGs. So activated by a membrane lipid. And PKA is activated by uh, four cyclic AMPs. So this is all found in, in unit two. Pay attention to what activates them and what turns them off, what terminates the signal. Which of these molecules has the second lowest oxidation number? I don't like this one at all because when I'm going through oxidation numbers, you know you can, that has an eight. This has a 6, this has a 4, so I know it's not any of those. But if I was doing numbers, I would say 0 and 0. But because there's one hydrogen here, that's, that's his answer for second lowest. I know it's tricky, I can't explain it, but if you're, if you're forced to choose between those two, the one with the hydrogen is going to win. What activated carrier is derived from pantothenate? That is CoA. So I'm going to pull up this slide 151 here because he answered, or there's three questions that come from it. So you, you know all of the vitamins so far, and you know the coenzymes and their abbreviation, like TPP and COA. Here's the answer to that one right here. But on the next page of the test, he's going to ask for a typical reaction type. 
this is nutrition, so you won't ask that stuff. But to play it safe, it, it was three questions, so I would, I would really recommend taking a close look at that slide, as well as the one right before it. And they go they go hand in hand together. So when, when I'm looking at FAD and NAD+, plus, those are both redox reactions here. And redox reactions are going to carry electrons. For the folate for THF here, one carbon units. If you look at the next slide, under folic acid, same thing as folate. One carbon components. So just keep an eye out, link those two slides together in your notes, and memorize away. I have no idea on this next question, to be honest. I probably would have guessed intestinal cells. So he might have mentioned this in class but I can't figure it out. Uh, but the answer is liver cells on his answer key. I would guess that one got tossed out. If anyone has an explanation, can post it on the uh, page, and I'll edit this test. All right, next page, which is not a general characteristic of catabolic pathways. It's a pretty straightforward one. They are inhibited by high cellular energy. So make sure you know 162, that's the catabolic stuff. And then by default, the opposite is all on 163, which is the anabolic stuff, the last two slides of the first unit. So this is a biochemistry one question, which has a low standard energy of hydrolysis. So we know ATP has high. And acetyl-CoA is almost the same as ATP. So it's not those. And PEP, creatine phosphate, and 1,3-BPG, those are all your other three um, high energy of hydrolysis ones. f one six bisphosphate is the answer. Which of these vitamins is functionally like vitamin A? I'm not sure if you meant to put vitamin A here, but the answer is vitamin D. Functionally, they're both uh, steroid hormones. Remember, A, D, E, and K are all lipid-based. And your Bs and C are sorry, lipid-soluble versus water-soluble. So functionally, these are the structure. Uh, these right here are the structural organization. He could try to trick you and say which one of these is functionally like vitamin C, and the answer to that would be vitamin E, because they both function as antioxidants. So pay attention to functionally versus structurally. Enzyme does not participate in converting glucose to pyruvate. There are no ligases. There is also no uh, hydrolases. So look, I think it's on slides 9 and 10 of unit 3 for all the enzyme classes. Make sure you know this really well. It's going to come up again in the test. Uh, number 12, I just mentioned when we pulled up slide 51, the answer is folate. Class of enzyme reactions are not typically regulated. That could be four or five. One and three are usually regu regulatory. Uh, or sorry, three and six are usually regulatory. And one and two are sometimes. They may be regulatory. In the case of glycolysis, you have enzyme class twos that are regulatory. All those kinases, one, three, and ten. But not necessarily, because... Number seven is a kinase that's not regulatory. That reminds me, he usually does ask about that one. So review number uh, step seven for that PG kinase, as it looks like it should be regulatory, but it's not. It's the exception when you do it in the body versus in the lab. 
So here's the third one off slide 51, electron transfer reactions. The answer to that is niacin. Could also just switch out riboflavin, and that would be the answer as well. Which of these second messengers is the largest? So I'm looking at just calcium here, and a couple lipid-based metabolites, and a nucleotide. None of those are going to come near a protein. See a protein in a question like this? That's the answer. And this proteins can function as second messengers. That IRS with a phosphate attached is the messenger to um, PD, PDK1 in the insulin pathway. These molecules appear to be the smallest. Same type of question. You have proteins and enzymes here, 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 and here. And you have a metabolite there. If you want to see a picture of it, it's on slide 47. Be careful of that nitric oxide synthase. It's the one that makes nitric oxide, which is the smallest signaling molecule. But the protein enzyme that makes it is not. The signaling molecule is not transduced by G protein. Just know that insulin is that tyrosine kinase receptor. Number 18 is pretty straightforward. Adenylate cyclase is the enzyme that catalyzes that. Which enzyme is not essential for the signaling of insulin? If you know your insulin pathway, you know PKG is nowhere in it. So that's going to be the answer. Which signaling molecule is not generated from a membrane lipid? Remember, we're usually talking about cholesterol here. And all of these are lipid based. Nitric oxide comes from arginine. This protein turns off the signaling by epinephrine. It's beta arrestin on slide 32 here. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure uh, glucagon could be the same. It's the same type of pathway. So don't quote me on that, but if it is similar, that's your only guess. That's what I would guess if the answer of this question was glucagon. Protein does not have catalytic activity. So the answer is calmodulin. The only thing I know about calmodulin is it's associated with calcium. I really don't know anything else about what it does. But if you look at the other ones, you know, PKA does stuff in regulation for glycolysis. So that definitely has catalytic activity. The insulin receptor goes to the IRS protein. So it phosphorylates the next thing. It's also phosphorylating itself. Linolate cyclase makes the cyclic AMP, which leads to the PKA. And the step before that, the G protein being turned on activates the adenylate cyclase. So just make sure you can tell the story for all those. Know your pathways well. I think we talked about this a bunch. Dissociation, he loves to ask this. PKA. Which is not a typical response to normal fasting. It's going to be muscle glycog glycogen degradation. Now, if it just said glyco glycogen degradation, that would be the answer, because it happens in the liver. So liver glycogen will degrade with normal fasting, but for it to be muscle glycogen, you would need some sort of exercise. So you can review all the effects on slide 74. Proteins known to bind to calcium. It's calmodulin. A couple slides that have a few bits of information starting around slide 53. This protein is found in all cells. This is coming back to 
anything with glycolysis. So any enzyme of glycolysis could be an answer here. Glucagon receptor is the liver. This is not a human enzyme. Insulin receptor is a little more specific than that. And calmodulin, don't know much about. But I definitely know anything in glycolysis, so I wouldn't even look at the other ones. This metabolite is generated in all cells in significant amounts. This could be any of the metabolites in glycolysis. This is not in all cells. Uh, this is only in cells with the mitochondria. This is mitochondrial. Lactate is going to be red blood cells and muscle. And F26-bisphosphate, you require only a very small amount. So not that's not a significant amount of it. Which enzyme undergoes product inhibition? Basically, like direct negative feedback is how I think of that. So that's hexokinase. Uh, if you're going from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, the presence of this will inhibit that. So that's product inhibition. Slide 77. Let's see, which of these is generated by a lyase? It's going to be gap. Aldo lace. If gap wasn't an answer, it could also be uh, PEP coming from enolase, the other lyase in the glycolysis pathway. So I think there's been th at least three questions on enzyme classes in of glycolysis. Another straightforward one, glucokinase or hexokinase 4 is the liver sensor enzyme. What's it sensing? It's a glucose sensor. This protein has not been found in liver cells. First choice, that's GLUT4. GLUT4 is muscle and fat, so make sure to review your GLUT families. Liver is GLUT2. One and three is all, all cells. And five is a uh, liver fructose transporter. Doesn't want to talk about five. All right, last page. Which is not a glycolytic reaction. Right off the bat, that 2,3-BPG is in the uh, red blood cells pathway. Which is not a glycolytic enzyme. Pyruvate decarboxylase is not in humans. It's the enzyme found in um, bacteria or yeast, something something to make ethanol. We don't have it. Which is not generated in the brain under normal conditions. Remember, lactate, red blood cells, and muscle only. Every test. He wants to make sure you know where lactate is coming from. Lactate is going to be the incomplete oxidation, incomplete oxidation of glucose. So red blood cells generate all of their energy from the incomplete oxidation of glucose. If it was complete, you would need a mitochondria to complete the oxidation process. More about that for the next test. Which enzyme is the most immediate inhibitor for the synthesis of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Uh, the answer to that is PKA. So uh, there's a bunch of slides where it's talking about this complicated step three regulation. I think if you can explain and draw out slide 90, I think that's the best one visually, so keep working on that till it makes sense, and look in the handwritten videos for a better explanation of that step. It's a little bit tricky, but once you get it, it clicks, and it will come back in later units, so know it now, it will be on the test. Know that step three regulation. Which nucleotide does not appear to participate in the regulation of glycolysis? 
Uh, six of GMP is not mentioned anywhere in Unit 3. So most of these are related to energy charge. There's on slide 76. It talks about AMP kinase. So energy charge definitely regulates glycolysis. Protein does not participate in the rapid release of insulin by the beta cells of the pancreas. Be able to tell that story on slide 68. Exokinase is not a part of it. Uh, which metabolite does not appear to regulate glycolysis? That's 1,3-BPG. We've talked about how this regulates step 1 or inhibits hexakinase. Fructose 6-phosphate is what creates this one, which is the most potent regulator. Fructose 6-phosphate is also uh, discussed on slide 79, the liver sequestration. It's the one that tells glucokinase to go back into the nucleus. Make sure you know that. And F16 bisphosphate does the feed forward stimulation in for step 10. So that's the answer to the last question. I'll look at that in just a moment. Which metabolite is generated only by red blood cells? It's 2 3 BPG. So it's two questions from that one slide, slide 54, about that little connected pathway. And which metabolite activates muscle pyruvate kinase? The answer is A. It's found on three different slides, 77, 84, 91. It's kind of snuck in there on all of them. So make sure you know those really well. A lot of the questions about regulation and enzyme classes. I think that's all I got for you. Good luck.